So we have a minute 48 over 10. <laughs> North Texas is up 473.70 East Canadian. We have Lizzie Monroe 58 58 North Texas State. We have St. John's up 36 29 in America. And some games have finished. We have Old Dominion. We have um, Old Dominion beat Jerusalem 16 54. Number 14 beat North Western 84 64. Number 23 beat Xavier 99 57. 62 50. 66 52. I'm going to be American. We have Lauren Tucky beat. Now we're 76 52 and 46 43 South. That upset Louisiana. South Alabama is 1 and 15 in the conference. And Louisiana, and Louisiana was 9 and 7 in the conference. But Louisiana falls to 9 and 8 in the conference, 14 13 or South Alabama goes to 9 and 20, 2 and 15 in some belt play. And we have West Virginia, number 21, 4 in the country, fell to Oklahoma State. Four, we are 14, four, Oklahoma State is 14 and 14 overall now. And they are 6 and what, 11 in the Big 12, I believe. No, 7 and 10. West Virginia is 11 and 6 in the Big 12. They might not fall, West Virginia might not fall the top 25. They, I mean, they, they had two losses, two top 24 losses. Or they beat actually three in. Three this month they had, they lost to Baylor, then they beat TCU, lost to, beat, oh, actually they did beat Oklahoma, but Oklahoma did jump them in the poll. Oh, uh, next week after that, so they were 21st I think, and then West Virginia was 22nd. I remember to... West Kansas State lost to Baylor again. West and then lost to Oklahoma State. So I think they should be all the top 25. West Virginia March second. Yeah, they played TCU, so probably not all the top 25. Oh, Monday. Monday. And we so it's and then let's go to East Carolina North Texas. On ESPN Plus. Shoot, Duncan finds Lampkin and one. There's 44 points. What on a text. find by Duncan, and Tamisha Lampkin gets the friendly roll. North Texas by five. When they play inside the arc, John, against this matchup defense, <laughs> that's when their best things have happened. Wasn't pretty here. Loses the ball, kicks it out, but she drives the closeout, gets to the paint. Gives a nice pass to Lampkin and the muscle inside the emotion from 24 as she now has 21 points on the evening. Her sixth game of 20 plus and off the miss an immediate timeout by ECU to get it into the front court with 44.8 to go in overtime. But North Texas making a clutch offensive play Tamisha Lampkin's bucket puts North Texas in front by five. Okay, when you turn okay, around, so you're gonna see some more. Yeah, let's go to Easy Man right in some steep. Or the media. You know, handle the ball in the in No, the it's actually we'll stay with him. East Grant and North Texas. And save you money when you bundle okay, home and auto with us. Three, two, one. We don't need a countdown. Just take the picture. Well, we got when there's no commercials. What? Okay, so we're back. He's kind of Welcome back into Denton. 44.6 left in overtime. A big Tamisha Lampkin bucket puts North Texas up by five with under 45 seconds left. And now for ECU, you got to go fast. Need two buckets in a hurry. Miller outside. Nowhere to go against the man on man. Miller fires. Miller knocks down her third three of the game. She had only hit three of her previous 39 threes before this game. And today, the freshman's on fire. Miller's been awesome. Uh, you go onto the ball screen, but the ball is dead. That's the part I'm kind of like, mm. once it's dead, you got to put some pressure on 
right there. She picks up her dribble. The ball is dead. Take that away, but good job. You're playing the percentages and players making plays. That's what this game is about. Good job by the freshman. She made the three in regulation in the corner, which was a huge three. This one also with another huge response, and neither team is going away. You're going to have to earn this all the way to the buzzer. And it also gives ECU a chance to play out this possession as well defensively. Yep. There's an 8.3 second differential. You're out of team fouls, so if you do foul, you put them at the line. No timeouts left for ECU, but that could not have gone any better for the Pirates to try to extend this game. Yeah, they did it in a short amount of time as well. So big possession here, as you mentioned, they do not have to foul. They can play this one out. North Texas trying to snap a two-game losing streak at home and also looking for their 21st win of the season that would tie an all-time single-season record in Mean Greenland. Down to 11 to shoot for Hardaway. She goes with 10. Now with eight to Colonel, knocked away. Hardaway got it back. Only four to shoot. Lampkin, can she do it again? She's blocked inside. Shot clock violation with no call. No timeouts left. Miller into the front court for the time. Miller off the glass and good. Count it, count it, count it. And the clock maybe should have stopped if it went in before the end of overtime, but a scramble bucket for Miller. We're going to a second overtime. Yeah, great job there by Jordan, but Miller with the over the top, doesn't get stripped. The freshman, the rookie, doing it so well here in Denton this evening, making back to back. She's on a 5-0 run by herself if this bucket counts. Kim McNeil said she can score. She just doesn't know what she's doing yet. <laughs> she plays hard. She knew what she was doing on this one right here. On that three and on that bucket right there, she knew exactly what she was doing. North Texas got a little bit too relaxed. And then on that play inside, they went exactly to Lampkin. She's been playing so well. But you have to continue to go through the contact, John. You have to make the confrontation at the rim. You can't just go straight up against a player like Joyner. She's going to block it every single time. Great job by ECU continuing to fight. And now they have the momentum going in this one. What a big time game. This is what March Madness is all about. I don't think it's quite March yet. I think we got a few more days, but it feels like it already, John. Could be a preview of things to come in March in Fort Worth at Dickey's Arena. Now for North Texas, they thought they had this thing won, mainly thanks to the incredible play of Tamisha Lampkin tonight who leads the Mean Green right now with 21 points. And there it is. And they're going to double over time. There. So let's go to Lizzie Monroe at Arkansas State. 67-60. 49 ticks to go. In the second to final symbol game for both these teams. With that, because you got... Arkansas State has only had 48 shots. That's just not enough shots to, to score what you need to to overcome ULM. And ULM has taken 14 more shots just in the second half than Arkansas State. And it's, I mean, it's tough to put, do that to your defense where, yeah. I mean, you that at that point now, you have to shoot such a high percentage yeah. if you're going to give up so many more shots. And, it's just been a little bit too much for the A-State offense to keep up with. Well, you know, the rule of thumb is college basketball, you know, I, I always as a coach wanted to get off at least 65 shots in a game. You know, right now, uh, ULM is at that at 62 attempts. You have to have attempts in order to score. And 48 attempts, just not enough. And the reason that, you know, ULM's got 13 offensive rebounds, and Arkansas State's turned it over 17 times. Those two have contributed factors to the disparity in the free throw attempt, or the field goal attempts. And Arkansas State turns it over for the 18th time. And Bradford cashes in as the Warhawks on a 10-0 run down the stretch here. You know, Coach Rogers not giving up. I mean, she's got 30. And is it really going back to the board? Yes. 78, 78. Back to one. 
Good. And the possession arrow in favor of the Mean Green. But ECU starts with the ball. McNeil stepping through and a beautiful kiss off the glass to give ECU the advantage. I wasn't sure if they were going to call it Traveler or not, but great move to be able to step through the way she did to get an easy layup. Given that step through continuation, Mallard ready to shoot and tie it up. I mean, you talk about somebody making a big shot. Mallard hasn't shot maybe in a couple weeks, it feels like, at home. Big time play there for the easy jumper. Takeaway by Lampkin, a steal for North Texas. Turnover number 16 for ECU, and North Texas can take the lead in OT number two. Foul trouble, there are three players with four fouls apiece for ECU. On the take, Robinson short, and on the rebound, Mallard called for the foul, so free throws the other way for ECU. Tough break there for UNT, had a wide open layup. Deani Robinson makes that probably eight or nine out of 10 times. Here you see the defense here, the step through. Beautiful move by the best scorer in this conference, and here you see Mallard with the Easy jumper, no hesitation, playing some big minutes off the bench. So Tatiana Weish was the one that got fouled on the other end on the loose ball. Weish working on another big game, and the 71% foul shooter. A couple big ones here. A settling shot by the transfer from Florida. Yeah, back-to-back -back double double games for her. Now that she's back healthy, and they won five out of six when they had this crew healthy. She was out about three games, and they lost three of those, all three of those games, came back against SMU and got a victory. And she is a huge part of this game, huge part of this team. Weich has 14. Duncan thought about the three, steps in. Hard away for the lead. Back rim, but Lampkin chases the rebound down, finds Robinson for the tie, in and out, and Weish clears the carom, ECU leading by two. Yeah, another point, Blake shot. Good job getting the extra possessions, and again, comes down to those little small margins. Great shot by Deion Robinson. Wasn't able to connect, and another great defensive rebound by East Carolina. You gotta dig deep now. Double overtime, Miller. Ball knocked into the air, and Miller called for the foul, and Miller has fouled out. That is huge for the freshman who has led ECU in this comeback with 19 points. Yeah, that's a, just a tough break. She jumped past. Good job again by Hardaway. I've said it about her being an unsung hero. Here you see her getting the deflection. They got her with the contact as Hardaway falls down. Could have been a no call. They decided to make it a call, and the clutch player for ECU in regulation and the first overtime. Fouls out of this game and her best game as a college player. I'm assuming because it was an offensive foul, it's not bonus, even though North Texas is in the bonus. Yeah, it wasn't. It was ruled an offensive foul, not a loose ball foul. 2.55 to play in the second OT. East Carolina by two here in Denton. Trying to make it a three-game home losing streak for North Texas. North Texas still trying to chase down Temple for a conference regular season championship. Colonel inside. Great job by Joyner. Colonel had it back. Now a reach in tie ball. It stays with North Texas with 233 left in double OT. Yeah, we mentioned the 50-50 plays. It's not about pretty at this point in the game. <laughs> you got to make it a little bit ugly and a little bit gritty. And the left hand finish doesn't go. Contact on the way down and refs letting them play and jump ball. So it is. It is early zero will be earns the seat 68 60. And after three on a plus one, St. John's free 235 and Mercury after three quarters. And when there's one game up, we'll either, either East Carolina or Texas, side. or there's a TV tunnel, so. Well, when, it, when there's the one game up, either East Carolina or Texas, or St. John's at Marquette, 
as of well, find the whip around. Because there's no, you yeah, cannot whip around the kids. But there's one big exciting game, Overton. So obviously you want to see Overton, right? I'm going to show you it. Search is the adventure. In the second and OT, we're back. 8 to 78. John Little back with Brian Burton and our whole crew. And the officiating crew is looking at something that happened during that tie-up on the baseline. What did John Calipino have to say to you, Brian? Yeah, he was just saying that they want to look to make sure there wasn't any uh, unnecessary contact to the face. So that's kind of what they're checking into. And it looks like they've come to a little bit of a conclusion. It is North Texas basketball after a tie ball, unless there was some kind of extra flagrant added to this. Yeah, I don't, I can't imagine that there would be anything just other than resume play. It's good that they checked it out to make sure, and it looks like we were correct just to jump ball and North Texas ball baseline underneath. That was not a coach's called timeout. East Carolina in points off turnovers, leading North Texas 21 to 17. ECU has won their last six games when having more points off turnovers than their opponent. They've lost their last five when having less, so that bodes well for the Pirates. Three to shoot, Hardaway forces it up, and wow, what a bailout by Kamorta Jenkins to put Hardaway at the line with a chance to tie it. Part of what I love about Hardaway, she doesn't usually make the same mistake twice. Earlier in the game, she did not get aggressive to be able to make a play with the shot clock. That time she did get fouled, get a great job on the shot fake, and again, just a heady point guard leading this ball club. She's played really well again in this game, controlling the floor with four assists, five rebounds, that big steal to lead to overtime. And makes both free throws. Again, it's a brand new game. North Texas led for most of this game, 37-55 of it. East Carolina's only led for six minutes. But late in the game, we've had eight lead changes and seven ties. Danae McNeil, maybe the best player in this league, lobs it inside to her buddy Mai Mai Joyner. Backing in on Lampkin, the quick shot and off the mark. Colonel there for the rebound. North Texas tried to take the advantage. Yeah, Colonel playing the three right now, giving an even bigger lineup to be able to go against this big front line. And, and Colonel gets blocked. What a great job. The quick hands by Bobby Smith, the 5'11 sophomore guard. Yeah, great block. And it actually hit Lampkin in the hands. I don't think she was expecting it. Was not able to come up with it clean. Oh, maybe a hit off Colonel. Yeah, it must have gone off Colonel. I agree with you. Initially, I thought it went off Lampkin as well. But the replay says no. Joiner, ball in the post against Lampkin. What a matchup, knocked away by Colonel, but right to Weish. Weish on the baseline against Mallard for the lead, comes up short. Lampkin grabs the rebound for her 11th double-double of the season. And North Texas with a buck 20, left in double overtime, throws it away. Defense is getting it done right now on both sides. North Texas 0-5 to last five, hasn't scored in three minutes. East Carolina hasn't scored in two and a half. Both teams on a little bit of a scoring drought. That time just too high of an entry pass. The turnovers have been a big part of this game. We talked about in the keys to the game that East Carolina needs to feast off turnovers. They have 21 points off turnovers. Meanwhile, North Texas has 19. John, I believe you have some stats on when East Carolina leads in the points off turnovers. <laughs> they do very, very well. They've won their last six games, but here's a turnover. Colonel takes it away. North Texas looking for the lead. Colonel trapped in the corner though. Finds Lampkin up top. Duncan not looking to shoot. North Texas goes into their half court offense. I'd imagine they're gonna go again to Desiree Colonel in the middle of this matchup. Hardaway goes to the ground. Ball in the air, picked off by Bobby Smith. Leading ahead, Danae McNeil. And ECU takes an 82 to 80 lead. Huge turnover and a huge no call. Hardaway falls down, thought it might have been a foul, was not a foul, and big steal that ended up as a result. You see Hardaway get knocked to the ground, and then it's just a fight for it. And luckily for East Carolina, Bobby Smith wins the ball. Danae McNeil wins the race. 
Yeah, that's what makes this defense so tough because when they get the steals, your guards are at the top of the zone, so you get these easy, uncontested shots like you just saw there. I wasn't sure if North Texas tried to call a timeout when Hardaway fell down. It looked like the ball was in Colonel's hands, kind of bobbled it, and another 50-50 play come up by East Carolina. Both these teams are exhausted yeah. physically. I'm sure exhausted mentally. They just want to be able to walk away with a win. Has not been easy. Both teams, again, mentally tough as nails, so well coached, so disciplined. You're seeing some championship basketball be played here in Denton. East Carolina is off until Sunday. North Texas off until Saturday after this slobber knocker. Colonel down by two. Game clock to shot clock difference, eight. That doesn't matter much yet. Now Colonel is fouled and goes to the line trying for two clutch free throws to again tie it up. Bobby Smith the foul. Yeah, the correct call. They wanted to go to Desiree Colonel. They have her playing the three, a little bit more of a mismatch there. You see the reach in, contact. The referees have done an outstanding job. This has been a physical, intense game with some well-played basketball players on all sides, and they've kept it really clean for the most part, despite all the fouls. Colonel, so good at the line. Three for three in this game. She has 15 rebounds and five assists. That's all? In this game as well. That is clutch. As clutch as you can get at this level, Desiree Colonel, who steps up in the big moments, makes it a brand new game again. 26.4 left in double OT. East Carolina ball, they'll move it into the front court. As the late, great Stuart Scott would say, as cool as the other side of the pillow, big time players making big time plays in big time games. Desiree Colonel has 18 points. She's probably the smallest interior player in this game height-wise. She has 15 rebounds, which is a game high. She has five assists and is four or four from the line, 50% from the field. It feels like a quiet game for her, surprisingly even though she has 15 rebounds. Meanwhile, the East Carolina Pirates, after being down by 15 at one point in this game, clawed back to take it to OT and then double OT thanks to Kaya Miller. Miller not on the floor now. She has fouled out. But the Pirates do have Danae McNeil and company as they try to go back in front. What are they looking for on this possession? Going to McNeil. They're going to play ball with her in the ball screen. I'm sure with Mai Mai on a wing, trying to play two-man game with their two best players, or they're going to go just straight flat and let her go one-on-one. -on -one. Definitely want to be able to help in this scenario. They want to try to get the last shot. Duncan with 10. North Texas out of timeouts. Five now for McNeil. McNeil cut off, lobs it left. Gordon, baseline, quick shot, no good. Can you say triple OT as the Pirates cannot convert and these exhausted players must do it for five more minutes in Denton. Wow, that's all you can say about that is wow. North Texas gets another big stop. This is the second time they've had an opportunity. And they're going to triple overtime. East Carolina at North and North Texas. Let's take a look at the box score. So there's two, two players with five, one with player with five for for East Carolina. Miller has five. White has four and Joyner has four. Well, obviously they're still on the court. And then we have Lampkin with three, Hardaway with four, Duncan with three. And you have Wooten has four as well so uh, ten players only one two were in, one's foul out and two are in foul trouble none have fouled out for north texas but one is in foul trouble four and two are at three so and man this is a big big game 
it's gonna go to triple over time. But after triple, we're going to four. We'll see.